Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the Likert question complement of a base 10 integer. All right, so in this question, every non-negative integer n has a binary representation. For example, 5 can be represented as 101 and 11 represented as 1011. Uh, and one thing I want to say, if you don't know how we actually get that representation or how that makes sense, I'll be showing you how that looks like real quickly. Okay, and then note that except for n equals 0, there are no leading uh, zeros in any binary representation. So 101 is actually the same as writing 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, right? So those leading zeros are just ignored. But in this case, uh, other than for n equals 0, we do not have any leading zeros. All right, so the complement of a binary uh, representation is the number in binary you get when changing every one to zero, and every zero is going to be changed to one. So for example, the complement of 101 is going to be 0, 1, 0, okay? For a given number n in base 10, return the complement of its binary representation as a base 10 integer. Okay, so what does that mean real quick? So real simply, uh, let's say we have the number 5, and in binary, 5 is 1, 0, 1. And its complement is going to be, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to 1, and the 1 is going to become a 0. It's going to be the opposite. The 0 is now going to become 1, and the other 1 over here ends up becoming 0. So 101's complement is 0, 1, 0. And that is the complement that we get. So now what we're going to do, 0, 1, 0 is a binary representation of some integer. And we're going to convert 0, 1, 0 to its base 10 value, which is 2. So that's how it's going to look like, and let's just go through what this actually means and how do you convert it from binary. So just ignore the stuff on the top for now, and let's say we're given 1, 0, 1. Okay, so this is a binary representation, a representation of some sort of number. Now how do we convert this to an integer value? And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we start off at the rightmost value, and what we're going to do is we're going to do 2 to the power of 0. This is why they're called base 2 values, so 2 to the power of 0 multiplied by whatever this value is. And the value here is 1. Now we're going to add this with the next value. So over here, so now that we're going to increase the power by 1. So instead of 2 to the power of 0, we're going to have 2 to the power of 1, and we're going to multiply it by 0, since that's what we have. And finally, we're going to have 2 to the power of uh, 2, since 1 plus 1 is 2, and we're going to multiply that with 1. And what does this uh, end up giving us? So this is 1, so that's 1, uh, this is going to be 0, and this over here is going to be 4, uh, so 1 plus 0 plus 4. So that is going to end up giving us a value of 5, and if you want to go back and check over here, 101 is equal to 5. Okay, so hopefully you understand how binary works, but now how do we actually apply this to our question? So let's just go back to the same number, 101. And again, remember that 101 stands for the number 5. So what is the complement of this going to be? Well, pretty simple. 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1, and 1 becomes 0 again. So now this over here is 0, 1, 0. Now over here we have a very interesting observation that we can make. When you add the input, so in this case the input was 1, 0, 1, and you add its complement, we're always going to get a binary value which has only 1s in it. And that makes sense. But every time there's a 0, we actually have 1. So let's just take a bigger number, like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And since there's no leading zeros, I'll put a 1 over here. And this complement is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, no matter what the input is, the complement, when you add the complement to it, we're going to get a value which has only 1s. In this case, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 1s. So we're going to have 6 1s as our sum. And if you want to go back to, so over here we have three examples, and if you want to look at this over here, with the input of 5 and the output of 2, when you add them, we get a value with only 1, so 3, uh, three 1, so 1, 1, 1, which actually gives us a value of 7. And one more way to notice that, if you take the integer value, so 5 plus 2 ends up giving us 7. So you can kind of see a pattern here, and just to kind of emphasize on it, I'll go through two more of them. So over here we have 10, and then we have the number 5 as the output. And when you add 10 plus 5, the sum of it gives us 15. And this 15 over here has all 1s. Similarly, over here we have 7 and 0, right? So 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0. The red is the binary representation of it. And when you add them, you get the number 7 and the binary representation is all 1s. Now when you add the input and the output, we're always getting 1s. And this is a pattern that we actually want to stick to and use in our code. So how exactly are we going to use it? So now what the question is, is how do we actually get to our output? So for a fact that we're given this input value over here, 
And obviously we want to reach the output value here. And so in order to get to the output, what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the sum value over here. And we actually have a really small simple equation. So you can just see like input plus output is equal to our sum, right? We're just adding them, nothing much. So if we find our sum over here, we can actually come up with the input over here. Now the question is, what exactly is the sum? So in simple words, if you just look at the binary values, it's a binary value which has all ones and has the same length as that of our input. And the other way that we can look at it is we can actually just look at the number itself. So this number over here is going to be the first number which comprises of all ones in its binary representation which is greater than or equal to. And the reason I say equal to is because look at this over here. So this over here is the first number which is greater than or equal to the input and the input has all ones in its binary representation. So its sum is also going to be that, which is uh, the same, right? They're both seven. So now what we wanna do is we wanna see how can we come across what the sum value over here is. And in order to do that, let's just try to look for any patterns that we have. So we have one over here. Um, I'm just writing everything which has all ones. So we have one, then we have one, one, then let's have triple one over here. And one more is gonna be quadruple one. So this over here has four ones. And now let's write the integer equivalent for this. So one is gonna be nothing else but well one. Uh, one one over here is going to give us a value of three. And uh, another way to just look at it is two to the power of zero multiplied by one plus two to the power of one multiplied by one. Okay, and then this over here is gonna give us a value of seven. And this over here is gonna give us a value of 15. Now, one thing we could do is we could go through each of this one by one and uh, come up with the value of it each time. But a simpler way is there's actually a small pattern over here. So we're starting off with the value one over here. But to get the next value, which is three, all we're doing over here is doing two multiplied by the previous value. So two into one plus one. And that gives us a value of three. Now, how do we get the number of seven given this value? So over here, we have the number three. And it's going to be the same thing. So 3 multiplied by 2 plus 1, which equals to 6 plus 1, 7. And now to get 15, same thing. 7 multiplied by 2 plus 1, which gives us 14 plus 1, giving us 15. So using this pattern, we're going to keep using this formula over here, which is the previous number multiplied by 2 plus 1 until we get a value which is equal to or greater than our input value over here. And once we reach that number, that means that we have reached our sum value over there. And that's really it. So we've reached the sum value. And in order to get the output from that, we take the sum, subtract that by our input, and we get our output. So hopefully all that did make sense. And let's just see how we can do that in code. And before that, let me just show you a real quick naive solution that you might come up with is, uh, just changing our number directly into its binary representation. And then we're going to go through each of those values or bits. And if it's a one, we may, uh, we add zero to our result or else we add one. And then afterwards, we're going to convert the base 10 value to a base two value and output that. But this solution over here is a lot better and a lot more effective. Okay, so let's just see how that looks like. All right, so this uh, solution could be pretty simple. So we're going to start off. Uh, the goal over here is to find the sum underscore value. And we want to first uh, calculate what that is. So like we saw earlier in the beginning, it starts off with the value of one. And that's what we're going to give it. So let's just be equal one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of a while loop. And we're going to stay inside of this loop until the end value is greater than our sum underscore value. The second, our sum underscore value is equal to or greater than our end value. We're going to stop going inside of this while loop. Now, each time we go inside of this while loop, we want to find the next number over here, which has all ones in its binary representation. And in order to do that, we came up with a small little pattern that we found, which is our sum underscore is going to be equal to its previous value, or in other words, its current value. We're going to multiply that value by two, and we're going to add one to it in order to get the next value that there is. And we keep going through this until uh, the while condition is not met and in that case we have our sum value ready for us and as per this equation input plus output equals sum and in other words our output is equal to sum minus input and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to take sum underscore over here 
and we're going to subtract that with our input, which in other words is the value end right there. So let's submit this and as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.